everyone. So, while on my vacation from all and any social interaction the past few months, I decided to pick up a modified Xbox 360. There's been a number of early Halo builds of games on the 360 that have leaked out over the years, and I've also wanted to dabble in some Halo Xbox 360 modding in preparation for MCC PC projects. Halo 4 is one of my favorite Halo games, and it also has one of the most interesting development periods as well. This build is from March 2012, nearly seven months before the game would go gold, if that means printed to disc. This video is largely unscripted, so bear with me as I may trip over a few words going through some of this footage and trying to explain things. There's a number of really interesting things going on in this build that confirm to me a few things that we've heard in the past, as well as give some insight as to how the final game ended out, specifically with the Forerunner weapons. You may also notice in this early main menu there's some unreleased music as well. I'll be releasing a full video of the menu so you can hear all the music without any interruptions later. A few interesting things to note in the UI here. The first thing is that you see the label of Midnight at the top of the menu. Midnight was the code name for Halo 4. The second was, that just flashed on screen a second ago, was the game mode Supremacy, which I believe is an early name for what would become the minion. Jumping into gameplay, let's take a look at the pistol and the assault rifle. The first noticeable thing is the texture pop-in, much like you saw in early Halo 2 builds. Of course, this is an in-development build and it's not expected that things like that should work well yet. More curious is the stretched unwrapping on the pistol's grip. Things like this are pretty uncommon when you're making a model, if you're going to be putting in a game, especially for a big studio like 343. Not sure what's going on here. In terms of the HUD, there's a different grenade icon, but more interesting is in the lower right hand side of the screen. Not only does it say Apture the Flag, clearly a typo or some sort of cutoff, but it also has a back button, which fits in well what they were trying to do with make the game more accessible by easily displaying the rules of the game. You'll also notice right above it, you can see the ring that shows which player is on screen. Now I'm not sure why in solo mode you would want this, but 343 has done other curious UI elements in their HUDs before, which seem to have no purpose. This one, for example, from H2A. In this early H2A screenshot, you can see that there's an Xbox One logo right next to the player's first place marker. Now, I don't know what this would be for, other than to determine whether who was on Xbox or PC back in 2014, but it's not a secret that they've had H2A running on PC for a long time, as they've recently said in the lead-up to H2A's release on the PC. These UI HUD artists are very deliberate in what they put on screen. So while this Xbox One logo in the screenshot I'm sure is a whole story of its own, showing that Wing Quadrant is pretty interesting. It is possible that it was just something that they wanted to have show up when you have multiple players on screen, which kind of makes sense. But it's also kind of weird because the Ring Quadrant shows which corner of the screen a player would be in. Curious either way. Now I want to focus on something I find really interesting here, and that's the Assault Rifle Pickup Icon. If you look at it, it's kind of weird looking. It's got these ridges and it looks like part of the upper cowling has been peeled back. So why is this and why would they do this? Was there another assault rifle model that they had before the one they went with in the game? I actually think it's due to something else, something a lot more interesting than them scrapping an old assault rifle concept. And that is a modular design, one much like we would see in Halo 5 where different weapon attachments could be attached to the top. Each of those little ridges corresponds to the segment on the gun. Take a look at this Halo 5 concept art. You can actually see a corresponding module exactly for that ammo counter that would fit exactly with the old pickup icon. It's quite interesting how forward thinking their new art design direction was since they were going so heavily into this gritty realism, which I personally really like. I would caution against any thinking that this meant that they wanted to have weapon attachments for Halo 4. When they were working on Halo 4, they didn't even know if it would be a 360 title at first. It was possible that it would come out on the Xbox One. So this could just have been forward-thinking ideas and art they had done to show how these things would work in the first place. Why Halo 4 wasn't an Xbox One title is a whole other story I can tell if people are interested. Moving on, let's take a look at the scatter shot. Now, the scatter shot was the very first Forerunner weapon that 343 finally felt they nailed, which may seem funny considering how people think it's kind of lame. As you can see here though, the scatter shot actually has some really bouncy projectiles. Now, I really like this. There's a couple of other differences going on here. There's some incomplete model and shaders uh, work left here to do. 
and some of the decals are screwed up. But what's interesting to me is just how bouncy the projectiles are. Now, it's really important to understand what struggles 343 had with the foreigner weapons. You can see here just how unique this gun is, but that was also part of the problem that they had with them. A lot of times they would do playtests with the new foreigner weapons and find that pro players and competitive players didn't like them just because they were too hard to understand, they weren't lethal enough, or they were too gimmicky. Which is why in the final game, they're reduced more down to human weapons that are, well, orange, which I think we all agree is kind of like. While I really like how bouncy this is, it actually reminds me a lot of when you would throw a spike grenade in Halo 3 and it would just fill a room full of the rounds. Uh, I can just see this being something that pro players and competitive players could really hate just because it was so gimmicky and there's no way to really counter this if someone's just shooting at a wall filling it full of pot plasma or whatever projectile this was at the time. Hard light, I guess it is. But whatever you want to call it. Oh yeah, and it has a different reticle, which really is not that big a deal and kind of normal during development. Looking at the battle rifle, there's something interesting to note as well, and that's that the scope is further back on the gun than the final game. Uh, I don't know exactly why this would be in the pickup icon, it doesn't seem to me in first glance to be something that's going on in first person, but it's a curious change nonetheless. Moving on here, let's take a look at the Spartan laser. Now there's not really much to see here. You'll notice that the reticle is a little bit different, and it has a little charge icon in the upper right. Uh, this charge icon is also used for heat on some weapons. I don't think it's anything that significant to look at either. It's probably just something there so they can quickly have something to plug into if they want to. You'll notice here on the plasma turret that it's there as well, even though the plasma turret doesn't use it in any shape or form. Now, let's take a look at the first version of the incineration cannon. It's still using rocket launcher animations, it doesn't have its own HUD, and it has a very different reticle. The projectiles don't have their effects either. However, the explosion effect, I'm kind of fond of. It looks a lot bigger than what's in the final game, and I dig it. Um, and, oh, yeah, it has no textures. Here's a look at it in some better, brighter lighting on the map long. Moving on, let's take a look at the concussion rifle. There's really nothing going on here. It's already got its new textures and the green lights, and it has four rounds. Other than that, it's pretty much what you'd expect, and there's really nothing more to say here about it. But there is something to say here about the suppressor, which is almost like its Halo 5 incarnation. It has a ramp up speed, where at first it fires very slowly and accurately, and then ramps up to be uncontrollable. I kind of dig it and much prefer it over the orange SMG we got in the final game. However, much like the scatter shot, you can see where this would be very bad for competitive players, who generally tend to like reliable weapons, as they should in a competitive setting. The gun is, of course, missing other kind of effects and lights, as well as its highest resolution textures. It's possible the high-res textures are there, they're just not loading in all the way on these early builds. Also, this is using the pistol fire effect sound. Now let's take a look at the light rifle, and I know what you're thinking, what is up with that scope? As it would turn out, uh, apparently nothing. It's just that since the weapon is using another gun's animations, it's pointed more downward and therefore it looks larger. Take a look at it in Halo 5. It really appears to just be a matter of perspective. And even if it isn't, it's really not that big a deal in the actuality of things. Another interesting thing about this alpha version of the light rifle is that it actually does a four round burst, not three. Based on the audio, it still does burst fire when in zoom. It does, however, get an accuracy boost as you see the reticle tightens to reduce spread. Interestingly, there's another light rifle model in the game, this one with sniper rifle animations that covers the role of the binary rifle. Again, I wouldn't look into this too deeply, it's an alpha build so these sorts of things are common. Let's take a look at this early version of the bolt shot next. Now, if you think it looks different, it is missing its textures and it has blue lights instead of orange, but other than that, it's the same asset as the final game. Now, what it has here that most people will probably be wanting to have back is its secondary fire, which is a stasis field. Similar to that of the bishop beam, the weapon will go over in a little bit. Its primary fire is borrowing effects from the plasma pistol, including the projectiles and the overcharge. While the overcharge on this version of the ball drop may seem like an improvement over the shotgun blast we got in the final game, it's again very easy to see why this would have been a problem for multiplayer. Can you imagine being in a battle rifle duel and all of a sudden somebody just shooting you with this and not being able to move anymore? Or in the campaign, seeing an enemy use this on you when you're trying to fight an elite or a knight? 
think it's actually really good this got cut, as interesting as the concept is. I said we'd go over the bishop beam, which I have right over here. Apologies for the crappy clip. The bishop is actually the code name for the Watcher. All the Halo 4 enemies are named after chess pieces. The crawlers are pawns, the watchers are bishops, the knights are knights, the didact is the king, and the librarian is the queen. So we can deduce the bishop beam would be for the watchers. Again, had this been added, I think it would be really frustrating to fight against, and I'm glad I hit the cutting room floor. The last really notable thing in this beta build is the binary rifle. And if you're like me, upon first glance you're thinking that this thing looks really different, and it's a completely different asset. Turns out, it actually doesn't appear to be upon closer inspection. Now, it's using a different set of animations that's really close to the camera and really high up, so it looks like it has this huge incline, that little mountain, so to speak of. But the other thing is that the scope is in the wrong position compared to the final model. And when you look at it closer, you realize it doesn't make any sense to have the scope there in the first place. Take a look at this shot from the final game of Halo 4. Now, that huge incline seems to be gone, but the scope is oh so closer to the base of that incline. So, it's really hard to say whether that incline is still there somewhere, just covered up by the scope, or if it's completely gone altogether. However, because I'm insane, I decided to go digging a little bit deeper. Take a look at this freeze frame. Suddenly, that incline doesn't look quite as sharp as before. And now take a look at this render. The curvature of the lines and the slope are almost identical. Also really interesting. The scope sits on top of that mountain, just like we see in the early footage. Compare that again to the final game of Halo 4 in Halo 5. It almost seems that in Halo 4 and 5, the scope sits and attaches to that orange bulb at the base of the mountain. Things get a lot less interesting from here on. The Needler is unchanged, and the LMG is pretty much what you see in the final game too. The shotgun is still using the Reach asset. Now, this isn't that they were going to use the Reach asset, it just is that they were using it currently until the new asset was done. And the new asset looks a little bit different in the upper right HUD. While I'm aiming at the sky here, you can also see this older skybox, which I really like with all these purple hues and orange. I really kind of wish they had used this in the final game. If I remember, the final game uses a lot more of a blue one. The gravity hammer is here as well, but there's honestly nothing to write home about about it. Finally, we have the beam rifle, which is missing some effects, and then we have the fuel rod gun, which is missing its little displacement. That pretty much sums up all the weapons in this build, but I do want to show off the pulse grenade. The blast is much larger and has some pretty interesting effects, but that's pretty much it. It still does the same thing. Thanks for tuning in for this video. I hope to do a lot more videos like this looking into some unknown parts of Halo in earlier builds. If there's anything you particularly want to see or have interest in, please let me know and I'll do my best to do a video on it. I plan to do a lot more videos in the coming months, especially as we're all stuck at home. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave it a like, subscribe, and share it to your friends. Until next time.